when it comes to the start of the season, which club will Romelu Lukaku be playing at? Oh, come on. That's an unfair question to ask in July. <laughs> you know it is. I, I, he wants Inter. He wants Inter. I think he feels like he made a big mistake leaving Inter the first time. I think he feels like he would like the story to be that he makes amends to that club, to that fan base, gets to go back there and make it happen. The financial realities are, are difficult for all of these clubs, for every Italian top club right now. They're all stiff working to, to tight budgets. And I think unless Inter can make the big sale, like, for instance, Banana, who they're trying to move off the books, it's very hard to see where the money comes from. Juventus, likewise, haven't really got money to throw around, but they have got a big bargaining chip in Blavich. So right now it feels like Juventus have more market leverage, at least until that Banana sale is done. But I think he wants Inter. So my quick answer, which I've just given you lots of long-winded reasons for, is still Inter. Say that Vlajevic becomes like a pawn within this, this transfer deal and Juventus obviously try and use that and Chelsea use it the other way to get rid of Lukaku. Vlajevic at Chelsea, is that the answer, uh, Nicky? Obviously, great first season, rubbish second season. Yeah, I'm a bit lost on Vlaovic as I am on a few players at Juventus because Max Allegri does not seem to have brought the best out of him. You know, his best half season at Juventus was the first one after he arrived mid-season from Fiorentina and the manager didn't really have time to, to get his claws on him in some ways, it feels like. It, it doesn't feel like it's been a happy marriage at all. I think there were always some question marks about the sort of detail of his technique. Was he really as technically elite a player as we want him to be? Or was it just the physicality and the explosiveness that convinced us he could be something really special? But I, I do think there's value there to be extracted that isn't being extracted at Juventus. And I look at players like, for instance, Kulosevsky, who went from Juventus under Allegri, where things hadn't been working, and goes to the Premier League and things look very different. And I think there's at least a chance that Vlaovic could show us something very different in different environments. And one last thing on Juventus, they're banned from the Europa Conference League. How much are they bothered by that, Nikki? Yeah, so this seems a lot like um, similar to what happened with the, the wage case in Italy um, with Juventus accepting short-term uh, pain to hopefully smooth things out for the long run. Don't fight this. Say to UEFA, look, completely want to sort of deal with these sort of infractions, have them dealt with so that in the future when we get back to a better place when we can qualify in the top four again then we're able to do that and go into the Champions League again so I think it's it's a pragmatic um, choice from Juventus to approach this as we can accept this short term pain we're looking at the long term again of footballers at Silverstone on Sunday for the F1 British Grand Prix including Paolo Dybala and Thiago Silva uh, Silva said this about Dybala. I've asked Paolo Dybala if it's true that he's coming to Chelsea, but he didn't answer. He's a top player. He'd be a massive signing for us. I'd like it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> is that how he said it? That's exactly how oh, he okay. said it. All right. Uh, this, is, this is just silly, isn't it, Nicky? He's not going to leave Roma. The strange thing is it's, it's sort of financially, again, very possible. His release clause at Roma is, is somewhere between 15 and 20 million euros. There's some disagreement about that, actually, but it's, it's very low. And um, and so someone could trigger it. But right now, no, I don't think he wants to leave. I think he it was a very hard decision for Dybala to leave Juventus. He didn't want to leave Juventus at all. He was quite sort of emotionally um, struggling with it at first. He got to Roma. He fell in love with Mourinho. He fell in love with this sort of um, system that was built all around him. And I think I find it hard to believe he wants to uproot himself again after a year. When I think by character, he's actually sort of... I don't know if homebody is the right word, but he's someone who likes putting his roots down, likes feeling comfortable, likes knowing what's what and, and who's who with his manager and, and with his club. And I think he feels at home at Roma right now. Does it feel like the answer, does it, to Chelsea's problems? <laughs> Paolo Di Bala and... Well, no, because Paolo Di Bala himself is an issue. It, it, he's, he's an enigma. And you have many of those at Chelsea to begin with. Yeah. It, the whole club is an enigma. And Paolo Vial... Pochettino's Argentinian. Yeah, He's well, Argentinian. Uh -huh. Is that how it works? No, yeah, it's, it's together. What, what are you trying to put together here exactly? Well, the... It feels like you have something to say about this, Dad. <laughs> I, have nothing, I have nothing to say. I'm just merely trying to add a little bit of positive spin. Benzema is the clear leader. Mm -hmm. He's now gone. Mm -hmm. Mbappe comes in. How concerned would you be that he would come in and upset the apple cart? Well, I think the Apple car has already been upset by the fact that you have a major, huge hole with Karim Benzema and that presence being gone. And Sergio Ramos has been gone. And, mm -hmm. and so there is a void of leadership that has been natural to this group. So you look to Karim Benzema for that leadership. 
he's no longer available. So then you have to start looking around as, as Tony Cruz, as Luka Modric. Are those then the guys that take over? Well, the truth of the matter is, and even according to my starting 11, it's one of them that's playing, not both of them. It's either or. And is that presence then available just in the locker room? And how, is, how does it present itself out on the field? There is a void of leadership for Real Madrid in this upcoming season. And now you have to find who's willing to take that role on. So a guy like Fede Valverde cannot just be a quiet guy anymore looking for Tony Cruz and Luka Modric to resolve a problem. Jude Bellingham, if indeed he gets another opportunity to play right away, he's going to have to show some of the same qualities that he was showing at Borussia Dortmund that include leadership, even though he's as young as he is. Thibaut Courtois has to play a role, a much better role than what he did in Belgium, where he was crying over the captaincy. So you're going to have to find maturation from players here that are going to have to carry a responsibility that they haven't had in the past. And when Kylian Mbappe, if indeed he comes to that locker room, just his presence alone is going to take a lot of air out of the room. Right. And that's when these guys like David Alaba has to be able to say, we love you. We're going to depend on you. We want you to be productive. Don't but, be an idiot. But, Correct. Yeah. You know, no, but, but also you've got Ancelotti leaving at the end of the mm. season. Yeah, that, that's a, a, a whole different... We don't know who's going to inherit that hot seat and, and how they're going to manage the, the egos um, within that dressing room. But a couple of things to, to what we've just been discussing. For me, I, I just feel that Real Madrid as a club and their history dictates the culture of that mm. club and the dressing room. Contrast that entirely with PSG, particularly under this ownership where it's been the biggest star who's dictated that culture. It's, so it's a totally different dynamic than what we've seen with Kylian Mbappe and PSG to Kylian Mbappe if he does arrive at the Bernabeu. We know who the star is. And to, to Ali's phrase, there have been multiple players who take up all the air in the dressing room that have come and gone. And Real Madrid have always managed to dictate, have always kept hold of their culture, their standing, in the game. So I, I see this as less of an issue for Real Madrid in terms of managing uh, Kylian Mbappe, but Kylian Mbappe going to the perfect club where he is just not the person that everybody is kind of turning to and the president is calling and, and all the other nonsense that kind of came with, with, with certainly the last two years of, of his time in Paris. And then to the previous question about how you deal with Kylian Mbappe's status. Now, all, all things being, being even, Somebody has to say something, or somebody would say something, and, and it would come down to who is the would next... Would you be that person, Shaq? I don't know if I'd be that person. I, I would if, if I had to. You'd be at the back going, yeah. No, I, I, no, I'd, I'd, I'd say it if I, if I had to. But, but the truth be told is, given everything that we've spoken about, reported on with Kylian Mbappe over the last two years, I get the feeling that 99% of that dress room are just like, oh, here we go again. Right. Kylian and opening his mouth saying something stupid, and nobody's going to really take it on. Everybody's just going to say, yep, that's kind of what we've been dealing with behind closed doors anyway. No, no but nobody's that yeah. bothered. So, it's, I, I, again, so it's, 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 the, it's, the, it's the players just recognising who Kylian Mbappe has become um, and, and that not bothering them at all in the slightest. But, Shaka, and I agree with you, but the, the reason that players won't take it on is because they know it won't do anything. Yeah. It doesn't change anything. If you feel like this guy has the keys to the kingdom and everything, everything goes through him and all decisions are dependent upon what he feels in the moment, then you know it doesn't make any bit of a difference either to go to him or go above him because he's already done that. He's already in the ear of people that are decision makers in the club. That doesn't happen at Real Madrid, and I think that's a very good point, Jack. That doesn't happen at Real Madrid because Real Madrid is one of the few clubs around the world that are actually bigger than the players in, mm -hmm. on the field. The, the, the institution of Real Madrid will swallow you whole if you are not willing to comply, i.e. Gareth Bale. 
Yeah, and, and I'm not comparing Gareth Bale and, and, and Kylian Mbappe, but at one point, Gareth Bale was at the top, at mm -hmm. the crest of the wave, right? He was at the top of the world. And he comes to Real Madrid and had a few great moments with Real Madrid. And then he wasn't willing to comply, and all of a sudden, Real Madrid just took over, and Gareth Bale became an afterthought. Gareth Bale became an afterthought. Not that that would ever happen with Kylian Mbappe, but it's just an example of how important the institution of Real Madrid it is as compared to the individual player. Uh, who wins, by the way? Last question to you, Naden, between that starting 11 and Manchester City. Oh, City, like 10 0. Easy. Yeah. No problems <laughs> at all. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis, and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.